March is Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. It is one of the most common types of cancer in this country. And according to the latest data, about 24,000 Canadians were diagnosed with the disease last year. More than 9,000 people died as a result of the disease. Well, now a newly discovered bacteria could pave the way for future treatments and for early screening as well. And our house doctor, Peter Lynn, joins us now with more on that. Good morning to you, Dr. Lynn. Morning, Stephen. So tell me what this study found then. Yeah, so basically we're trying to figure out why certain people get cancer. And usually we say it's in your genes, you're born this way. But this study that was just published in the journal Nature said, could it be the bacteria causing trouble? In particular, one bacteria called Fusibacterium nucleatum. That's a mouthful. We call it FN for short. Um, this germ normally lives in your mouth causing plaques and gum disease. It's never in your intestine or colon. And yet they found this germ inside samples of colorectal cancer patients. So they compared samples from colorectal cancer patients to mouth samples of people that did not have colon cancer. And there are three types of FM bacteria. And they found that the FNA is the one that is the most common one. And the FNA has two versions, version one and version two. And version two is the bad guy that is found in the colorectal cancer samples. Now, the reason why that's important is because the two versions are like brothers. So they're 93% the same. So that means version two has 7% different stuff genes, and therefore they're making some different proteins. So we can zoom in on those proteins to see what they're doing differently. So could it be that these proteins go into your cells, flip the switch so that now your cells keep growing and growing forever? Or could it be that those proteins irritate your colon cells, so now you have a small war, inflammation, and so your bowel cells get damaged, they die, you have to make more copies of the cells, and every time you make photocopies, you can introduce mistakes or mutations and therefore cause cancer. Another idea is that our DNA is like a recipe book, and so therefore, we don't use all the recipes at the same time. So some of the chapters are closed, some of them are open. Mm. So could this germ go in there and change that process? So let's say it closes off a chapter that normally makes a protein to help you repair. So now your cells can't repair, therefore more cancer risk. So I think by studying this bad guy germ, we could figure out how is it causing more colon cancer problems, and more importantly, how do we stop it so that we can bring those benefits to patients? I happen to be one of those people who has a, a family history of it, and so yes. I am considered to be high risk, and I have to frequently uh, go to get looked at. Um, how do you overall risk or reduce the risk of developing colorectal cancer? Yeah, first thing is getting people talking about it. So this Cancer Awareness Month about colorectal cancer is yeah. helpful. I remember when I first graduated, we diagnosed colon cancer when the guy lost 20 pounds. You know, then we said, oh, maybe it's colon cancer. Or yeah. they bled so much, they lost so much blood that they were feeling tired wow. and they were anemic, and that's how we found them. Nowadays, we have stool tests that can check for blood in your poop that you can't even see. If there's blood, then you might be leaking from your cancer. Now, if your cancer is not leaking, then the poop test will not find it. So we have colonoscopy. That's the long tube yeah. with the camera, and we can look inside, and we can pluck off the tumors. So if um, it turns out colon cancer grows from a small little growth like a polyp, and then it takes about 10 years for it to change into cancer. So if we can remove that growth at any time, you reset the clock. So now it has to start growing again. And so most people around 50 is the average time that they have more colon cancer risk. So that's why the screening is there. But recently we've seen younger people get colon cancer. Maybe this little germ thing has something to do with it. They're looking into that. And so that's why some people are saying, maybe we should start screening at 45 or 40. But just remember, if you have symptoms, then it mm -hmm. doesn't matter what your age is, you should get checked. So if you see blood, red or black, uh, pencil thin stools, cramps, constipation, weight loss, or low blood count like anemia, then you should get checked regardless of your age. And as your situation with a family member with colorectal cancer, mm -hmm. again, regardless of your age, you should get checked. If you have a first degree relative, so that's parents, sibling, kids, uh, if they had colorectal cancer or even lots of polyps or polyps that are more advanced, like they're looking like they're heading towards colon cancer, then you need a colonoscopy to look. And you should do it 10 years before the age that the other person found out. Because right. we need 10 years to sort of play Star Wars in there and zap them away. And if you have inflamed bowels like Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, your cells are constantly being damaged. So you have to make new copies more mistakes can be made with the new copies, more cancer risks, so they need checking. So the bottom line is don't wait until you have weight loss and bleeding like the way in the olden days with us. Yeah. Um, if they find it early, 
they're talking about cure rates of 90% of the people are cured. Like we're talking gone, you know, yeah. so therefore early detection is really important. Mm -hmm.